Hi, good morning guys. Welcome uh, again from uh, sunny Spain. It's been a crazy, crazy hot summer. I think most of you, are, well most of the world has had it this year to be honest. Since mid-May, uh, we're now in uh, mid-August. It's been w well over 35, 36 degrees every day. We had 41 degrees yesterday and we've had a few days where it's been over 41 degrees. Uh, it's been a strange old summer for biking. It's uh, quite strange here in Spain and it's... Uh, quite bizarre and uh, not very safe but often you see guys out and about on their motorbikes pretty much like most countries where it's super hot flip-flop shorts not just shorts swimming shorts vests trudling along even on uh, the motorways and highways 120 kph on uh, with no gear on whatsoever it's uh, quite a bizarre situation having said that as soon as you put gear on you're just wet as a rag it's uh, just uh, impossible really to have uh, any real enjoyment unless you get out really early, early in the morning when it's uh, 26 27 degrees anyway it is about 28 degrees at the moment it's morning it's uh, a monday morning mid to uh, late august and uh, i thought i'd do a quick video on the uh, v-strom uh, i'll take some uh, gopro footage of the v-strom and give you uh, my opinions i've not done a video on it yet uh, i'll just uh, give you my opinions and just chat in comparison to uh, the Royal Enfield and uh, let you know how I feel about it. So there we go guys, there's the uh, V-Strom. I uh, decided a while ago to get the 650 model of the V-Strom. Uh, one of the reasons was again the roads that in the uh, area where I live are so bad, they're, they're washboard and they're really tricky and the weight difference compared to what I would gain by getting the 1000 over the 650 was uh, marginal to be honest I mean this bobs along on the uh, highway, freeway, motorway, whatever you want to call it 130, 140, no problem, there's plenty left in it so uh, it's a nice bike for uh, getting about on about 215, 216 kg wet uh, a bit more with the uh, saddlebags and the uh, top box on, it's got a shad uh, 58x box on the back which actually fits two full face helmets in it's uh, an extending box so it actually this section here drops uh, drops down to the bottom when you undo it and you undo the uh, tabs inside you can drop it down to a lower box uh, two side boxes are quite handy not as handy as the Enfield in my opinion the, the reason why I say that is because when you go out and you go and do a bit of shopping on the Enfield you can uh, pop the box open and, and put your stuff in where if you've got the traditional type uh, bags on the side, I mean I could change these for the aluminium ones on the uh, V-Strom. But the tra traditional uh, bags on the side, these, uh, when you open them, they're locked at the moment, I'll get the key. When you open them, they actually drop down, so I'll get the key and show you uh, the logistics of using these compared to the ones on the Himalayan. So you can see when it's open, there's quite a lot of space in there. You can fit a full face helmet in either side. Uh, you've got the stash thing inside, don't go over 120 kph because of imbalance on the bike. But what I find if I'm putting anything in here, if, you, if you're if you strapping in, it's not too bad. But say you've got to get some uh, shopping and it was fairly heavy. You've got to try and get it in and hold the whole thing in before you get the side uh, case up to uh, keep everything locked in place. Uh, they are handy bags, they're uh, ideal for going away, they come off the bike very very easy if you're going to use them for luggage for an overnight trip. Uh, you would get enough uh, clothing and a spare pair of shoes or whatever, stuff to put on after you've been on the bike all day and there no problem. Uh, so all in all, what do I think? Well, to be honest, when I jumped on it, I was totally blown away how, he how easy it was to ride. Uh, I know I've said that about the Himalayan, but the similar sort of weight, when the Himalayan's sort of loaded up, we're going over 200 kg with the Himalayan. It's a smaller bike, as you can see. The uh, V-Strom sits a lot higher. Uh, it's a lot higher stance when you're actually on the bike. I've got the extension on the screen on the front to give it a bit of uh, more wind resistance. The screen on it, standard screen, is shocking, to be honest. It's uh, three-stage adjustable on this uh, V-Strom. So you can actually lift it up, and uh, you've got three points of adjustment. But I've tried it on all... Oh, we've got a butterfly wedged in there. Look, oh, we've got all three stages of adjustment on there and each stage to be honest it's uh, really really bad on the helmet it's, it's uh, considering the latest model which is this is a third generation uh, and the latest version of the third generation so the 18, 2018 model uh, with all the bells and whistles 
uh, considering they're supposed to have checked it in a wind tunnel, it's pretty atrocious. Uh, another bad thing that I don't like on the bike is there's no uh, pre-adjustment on the front uh, suspension. You can see there, there's no preload adjustment. Now on uh, eBay, Amazon and the other places, you can actually replace them end caps with a preload end cap, uh, which compresses the spring even more, which sounds a bit unintuitive. Uh, compressing the spring, you'd think it hardened the front suspension, but actually it has the opposite effect. Uh, it stops the harsh rebound when you go over a rut and it bounces back up and jars you. The back end's pretty good. It's uh, adjustable via a... If I can get around this side and show you. It's an adjustable by, via a dial. On the other side, you can actually see on the... Uh, the rear shock there's a, a gauge on the side and actually when you wind this in it's quite intuitive when you've got it fully wound in it's it's, it's softest setting and fully wound out it goes hard as well at uh, the bottom of the shock i don't know whether i can get around and show you the other side there's actually you can see it from here if i can get right underneath you can see there there's an adjusting screw so you've got to adjust the preload and uh, the rebound at the same time to get uh, an even sort of match on the shock. So that's the same again, I think, I can't see fully, but I think you turn it uh, left to soften and right to harden. I might be wrong there, because I can't see without my glasses on. Uh, a sign of old age, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, the back end's great. I mean, providing you carry a screwdriver, you can change it on the fly. The, the hand dial is enough to change uh, the rebound the other side and uh, you can change the other one if you've got a small screwdriver in your bag on the fly with you. So the ones that they actually sell on eBay, they sell two types. One is a screwdriver adjustable uh, end cap, uh, traditional, uh, where you put the screwdriver in and, and wind it in or wind it out. And the other ones have actually got a dial on them, so you can actually do it manually by hand. Uh, you can see the previous owner on this bike's put uh, bar razors on. Uh, they make a bit of a difference. It's quite uh, an impressive stance when you're on the bike it's comfortable it's it falls into your reach very very easily uh the engine's super super smooth it's uh almost too quiet when you when you're short shifting uh if, once you get it going and you're going through the uh rev range you obviously you do you do hear the engine noise a bit it's a a, a v-twin 90 degree v-twin uh 650 uh, cc and uh, I think it makes about 70, 71 brake horsepower, a bit more than the older ones, which were around 65. Uh, twin discs on the front. This has got the what they call the radial wheels or the spoke wheels here in uh, Spain. Uh, this is the uh, Sports Adventure Touring model. And to be honest, it's one of them bikes that you can just get on and, and literally ride straight off the uh, get-go. Even if you're a, you know, a, a novice rider, you can uh, ride the bike. One thing that was surprising, that I found surprising on this particular model, is the seat height is about 825, uh, about 32 inches I would say. Uh, and I've got an inside leg, I'm, I'm 5'10 tall, uh, but I've got quite short stumpy legs. <laughs> uh, so my inside seam is about 30 or just a smidge over 30. And I was thinking 32 is going to be a bit high to foot, I might need to change the uh, saddle on the bike. But to be honest, it's uh, quite strange once you get on it. I think it's the design of the seat at the front here, if I can show you. It's quite scalloped and thin. The tank's quite scalloped, so there's a, a nice fit to the bike. And I can flat foot this just the same as I can flat foot the Himalayan. And the Himalayan is uh, 25 millimetres lower at 800 or an inch in uh, Imperial. So uh, maybe 31 inches on the Himalayan and... 32 inches on the V-Strum, but there's no difference when you sat on them due to the uh, the way that the uh, seat's laid out. Uh, the idea behind buying the V-Strum, we I did put up a video, you can check that out on my feed, uh, the other week where we went out on a about 160-180k round trip on the Himalayan, two up with all the luggage, and it was fine. Uh, it was A-Roads, we uh, poodled around, uh, Really, really nice day out, but what we did notice on the way back on a few stretches that were uh, quite open with a national speed limit of uh, 120, uh, it would do 120 no problem, but there was no, nothing above that for overtaking or safe overtaking. Uh, when I got the V-Strom, my initial idea was I was going to sell the Himalayan, all you Himalayan fans out there taking a gasp, but, and this is the caveat the but, 
they're two different bikes. They both are adventure style bikes, but the Himalayan is a true adventure style bike. And I took the Himalayan out after riding the V-Strom for a while and thought, wow, this is a great little bike. The, the Himalayan, it, it's just got something about it. It's just very endearing, very, very nice to ride, very easy to ride. That big front wheel just absorbs all the rough roads around here, more so than the the 19 inch more road orientated wheel on the uh, V-Strom. You've got a 21 inch uh, intermediate tire on the Himalayan. And I got out on it and I thought, well, I'll, I'll just take it around the mountains and open it up. And I, I sort of rode it as if I stole it really. So I was in the rev range in second, third and fourth, 5,000 up to the 6,500 uh, red line. And uh, it was bobbing along. It's a nippy little bike. It's if you ride it short shifting, it's a slow bike. You need to keep it in the high rev range. When you get to the top in fourth and you shove it into fifth, there's not a great lot there. It's just an over, overdrive gear, really, to give the engine a bit of uh, a respite. But uh, it's one of them things where you think, oh, well, I'll sell it. And then you think, I can't do it. I'm going to hang on to it. And uh, like I say, if I sh when I showed you the terrain round here, I mean, this is the track going out of here. Uh, the mountains at the top, all these mountains have got fire trails as far as you can go and the V-Strom, although it's uh, slightly off-road orientated, it's an adventure road bike really in my opinion and if I want to go up there and I want to go to the top of the mountain up a fire trail out of the two bikes it's going to be the uh, the EMA that I'll take. Anyway I'll stick a GoPro on the uh, V-Strom and I'll shoot a bit of footage, I'm not going to shoot a great deal because in the other videos I've posted on there, you can see the terrain around here, but you'll get a feel and uh, see how the bike goes. guys the surface of the roads where we live are pretty rough although they're paved they are a tarmac surface but they're really rutty they've been overlaid with chippings over many occasions over the years and they're, they're fairly shaly and loose on the bends there's a lot of sand a lot of gravel <clears throat> the v-strom tends to uh, take it all in its stride and uh, to be honest with intermediate tires it would be even better on these bends still heading down off the mountain there's some pretty impressive uh, views along this section of road uh, like I said uh, it's not the best section of road to ride on but uh, hence the uh, need for an adventure bike I've gone through a few different bikes uh, over the years and none of them have actually uh, been very nice to ride on these roads are pretty uncomfortable and pretty glitchy so you can get on a bend, you can hit a bit of shale, it's a bit of sand and uh, the back end kicks out but what I found with the Enfield and the V-Strom is all in all it's a pretty uh, pretty safe and uh, nice ride. So a bit further along this road we'll come to a local town which is Ricotti and it's in the valley of Ricotti or Valle de Ricotti as they say in Spain and it's uh, a, a, an area for growing lemons and oranges and uh, citrus fruits mainly. We've got a, a large river that runs all the way along the bottom of the valley called the Rio Segura and at the end of the Rio Segura or in the middle uh, a bit further on from the town of Ricotti is the town of Blanca and Blanca has got a, a large lake, a man-made lake that uh, at one end has got a hydroelectric uh, dam that supplies a lot of the area's uh, electric so a few more twisties and uh, we'll get around a few of these bends across the bridge and down into the local town. 
Once we get through the town of Ricossa the other side, the uh, tarmac roads are a lot better. So I'll do a loop around uh, the area, down into the town, round the lake, and back up the other side and uh, let you see some of the scenery. pretty incredible about the uh, V-Strom and uh, it's a good thing really to have on these steep uh, inclined road is the engine braking and it seems pretty uh, consistent in all the gears I mean even if you're in fourth gear coming up to this curve now I'm anchoring on on the uh, brakes but the engine braking helps so much uh, it's a, a really really uh, good way of sort of uh, scraping off some of that speed and uh, giving you a sense of security uh, this road I'm going down now on uh, towards Ricotti, it's, it's got some real bad switchbacks and they're not just U-bends, they are full airpin bends that come back on themselves almost in the direction you've come from or even uh, more acute. Uh, so they do take you by surprise and you've got to be on the ball with them uh, if you can catch up if you're not uh, fully uh, ready to uh, ride along them. the town of Ricotti now. This is the uh, municipal town for the area I live in. Uh, the region is Morthia but the uh, local town that has a local town hall is called Ricotti and although it covers a fair amount of uh, square meterage land wise or square kilometres I should say, it's only got a resident count of about 3,000-3,200 people. That includes where we live up in the countryside and the local town and surrounding area. Uh, it's quite a small town, not a lot of amenities here, so a few local shops, but if you want anything, major supermarkets, uh, fuel stations, etc., you've got to go a little bit further, so maybe about 20 minutes, 25 minutes from where we live to get to any real civilization, but it's uh, quite a quaint little uh, town. Guys, we're leaving town now. We're getting on to uh, some decent tarmac. A lot smoother this side of uh, town and down towards the river. Uh, one thing you may have noticed all the way through uh, the switchbacks and bends and coming down out of the mountains on the uh, really rough roads. I never really got out of uh, third or fourth gear. Most of the time I was in third. A lot of the switchbacks uh, are down to second. And to be honest, even on a section like this where I'm opening up a bit now, third gear. Uh, there's a lot of power in this bike uh, for a 650 to be honest, 120 kph is 75 mile an hour and you've still got three gears left and you've still got 5000 revs left to the uh, red line. A lot of debate on the forums as to whether the 650 is uh, suitable for touring and whether people need the uh, 1000, the V-Strom 1000. Well, personally, I find that there's plenty of power in the uh, 650. I mean. It tops out at something like 180, 185 kilometres an hour. Okay, you're going to go 
a lot quicker on the uh, V-Strom 1000, but there's not many places in Europe, I don't know about America or the UK, where you're going to be getting to them sort of speed. Uh, so the debate's open if you want a big lazy tourer get the thousand cc if you want to do a bit of light off-roading and tour and have the weight ratio the fuel co uh, consumption and uh, a more flickable bike i would think having said that i've not ridden the thousand but i would think it's more flickable just test the brakes yeah they work out fine uh, the brakes are not the best on this bike uh, they're okay the front brakes pull you up and the back brakes not bad uh, but they're not sports bike uh, standard brakes, they're twin uh, discs on the front, single on the back and they're sufficient but as long as you uh, realise their limitations. Anyway, onward and upward on the journey. Now this section of the road guys is a lovely section of the road, there's a lot of twisty bends on it, the road surface is good and uh, it's a fast section, you can you can bob along here, obviously on the GoPro half the time when you watch it back it tends to look a bit quicker than it is, I'm probably toodling along here about 70-80 uh, kilometres an hour, not much more than that, but it, it's nice, it's a nice rolling twisting road, a few flickable bends but lots of uh, smooth uh, long leaning bends it's a nice section to run along just coming down around this corner you'll see the lake on the right hand side which is the hydroelectric uh, lake man-made and you can see the workings on the right there that uh, actually produce the hydroelectric uh, power for this region and the lake is uh, quite picturesque there's the other side of the lake there's uh, beaches man-made beaches and areas to walk picnic areas etc uh, river rafting on the river that comes right down the valley. There's some uh, pretty wide sections of river the other side of the lake with uh, weirs and rapids and there's lots of organised uh, river rafting trips from the town of Blanca where people come from miles and miles around to take a day out and go river rafting down the uh, river on organised trips. So you see some nice uh, curvy smooth uh, bends. This is one of the roads that's probably better around here. It's uh, a, a, a double carriageway road, as you can see, with a line down the centre. But most of the country roads tend to be single carriageways and poorly uh, surfaced, uh, quite badly and rutty. And But this one's a pleasure to ride along. It's uh, a dream of a road, to be honest. So guys, I'll let you watch the next uh, two or three minutes without me waffling away. Uh, some nice sections along here, some nice bends, and I'll go through an archway and head back up to uh, the countryside where we live. Another couple of minutes of video and then I'll uh, turn the GoPro off.
So there we are guys, there she is, dappled in the uh, Spanish sunshine. Beautiful engine, really smooth, plenty of grunt when you want it. Not too intimidating, not too uh, scary for a, a novice rider or even uh, a seasoned rider. It's a great bike to uh, slow, not slow down on, but to feel confident on it when you're uh, a bit older like uh, me, I should say. For me it's very uh, very very easy to ride very nice on the twisties very very well balanced nice exhaust note out of it really quiet when you're uh, riding short shifting uh, not trying to race around on it all to all in all it's uh, it's a really really nice bike uh, it's got a couple of riding modes it's got three uh, riding modes as such that uh, are on the bike uh, tr basically traction control so you've got traction control off which isn't really a mode but it's there on the uh, LCD dash uh, you've got traction control one which is basically sports mode or normal uh, riding mode with minimal interference from the uh, traction control and then you've got traction control two which I would say is uh, rain mode really or loose gravel uh, rough road mode but uh, for general riding uh, in uh, normal mode it's, uh, mode one seems to be fine for everything so there we are guys, what do you think? I think it's uh, it's a subjective thing uh, whether you like a bike or not, but I think she's a, a good looking bike. I think uh, the different iterations throughout the years have been uh, only slight, the beak on the front's changed, There's some of the bodywork's changed on the bikes. But this is a tried and trusted uh, 90 degree V twin engine that's uh, known to rack up the miles. There's, uh, versions of this in the 1000cc and the 650 that have done two, three hundred thousand mile no problem uh, with general maintenance, oil changes, valve clearances etc they're a tried and trusted engine uh, in my opinion very very underrated uh, it's probably one of the best adventure bikes out there in its category in its middle weight uh, I, I just can't see why you go out and spend 20 odd grand on a, a BMW GS with all the weight all the expense, all the worry of dropping it when you can go out and spend probably eight thousand, eight and a half thousand for the base model of this in euros in Spain, uh, nine thousand with the uh, XT model like this with the uh, spoke wheels and the engine guards and, uh, and guards, etc. Uh, it's just a, a bargain bike for what you're going to get for the money. So, guys, to uh, round up my thoughts on the uh, V-Strom 650 XT. Uh, lovely bike to ride, really smooth, nice gear change. Uh, the newer or the bigger uh, 1000 V Strom tends to have a slipper clutch. Uh, this has got the standard cable clutch, and it's uh, what you have to do basically when you're riding. There's with a V twin, especially 90 degree V twin, there's an awful lot of engine braking on the bike, so you can use the bike to slow down a great deal when you're engine braking. The only drawback to that is when you let the throttle off, when you when you don't want to engine brake and you do throttle off and you, you, you go to grab a better brake, the first reaction when you let the throttle off is a, is a lot of engine brake and a lot of throttle jerk. Uh, it takes a bit of time to master, but you can get a smooth throttle control once you've got the hang of it. Uh, it's a case of getting used to throttling on really slow, throttling off slow, uh, gear changing and a slow clutch change rather than in and out where you, get a, you really do get a, a strong uh, throttle jerk. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some remedies for that, but I've heard other forums say the same thing about the V-Strom, that uh, the uh, 90 degree V-Twin gives an awful lot of engine braking. It's noticeable in all gears. Uh, for instance, if you're in fourth or fifth gear and you uh, take your hands off the bars, most bikes will uh, bobble along in fourth and they'll carry on moving. They'll, obviously, they'll slow down. But what you find on the V-Strom, as soon as you take your hands off the bars, you've got this tremendous engine brake and you slow down really, really quick. Uh, not a bad thing, uh, it just takes getting used to, it's just something different. A lot of the newer bikes now have uh, slipper clutches and uh, uh, clutchless gear changes, so the you know semi-automatic now you can, uh, you can use the uh, clutch or you can just tap it into gear without using the clutch. But all in all on this particular model, uh, 2018 V-Strom uh, 650 XT, uh, pretty impressed, it's a nice bike to ride. The only caveat I would say with it, it's I would put it more, the general consensus is 80, 20, 80 on road, 20 off road. Uh, to be honest, it's more of a, a road tour in uh, adventure bike than an off road bike. I mean, straight away, the Himalayan tires on intermediates, 
these are on semi road tyres there's a bit of grip on them they're not like a sports bike road tyre but they are grippy uh, and the ground clearance now I don't know the, the yeah the Himalayan got a lot more ground clearance if you look on the side stand on the Himalayan uh, she's way up in the air and if I pan round and look over to uh, the V-Strom we're probably looking at a difference of about I, I would without measuring I would say the V-Strom when it's sat straight is probably about 150 160 mil maybe 170 which is five six inches I would say you've got at least eight inches under the uh, Himalayan that said the Himalayan's not made for going on uh, rough rocky terrain it will do I've seen some videos on YouTube where these guys are taking it through bogs and over rocks and all sorts and they managed to get through but what I would say about the V-Strom it's more road orientated uh, an interesting thing guys, I don't know what you think, but I was watching uh, a video this morning on the uh, new TRK702 uh, that's coming to all of Europe, maybe uh, North America as well. The previous version was a 502 and uh, I actually bought this uh, Suzuki V-Strom by uh, Partex in the little Benelli 500. Now the Benelli 500 I had, had the same engine as the 502, uh, TK502X. Uh, it was okay. I mean, it do highway speeds, 140 kilometers, no problem. It bob along, but it was sl so low geared and so much torque down the bottom end. You, you you could be in fifth gear doing 20, 30 kilometers an hour, and it would pull away from a junction, no problem. Uh, it just felt a bit over revved in every gear. Uh, I don't know why that was. Maybe the gearing, but it, it would do it. I mean, if you wore a full face helmet and you had earplugs in, it was fine. But if you had a any other type of helmet where you could hear the engine note. I think the engine note tended to override the way you were riding the bike more so than uh, if you had another type of helmet. Anyway, I better wind this up here and waffling. It'd be interesting to uh, hear your thoughts on uh, any of you guys who've got the V-Strom uh, 650 XT. Anyway, I'm going to wind it up here and uh, waffling too much. I'll upload this later and let me know what you think, guys. Give me a thumbs up, give me a like and subscribe. And peace out, guys.